I'll just move on now. Uh, Paul Malone is the secretary of the referees Midland branch and he's on the line now to talk to us about a fairly shocking incident that has um, come to everybody's attention really through social media. Paul, good morning to you. How are you doing? Good morning. How are things? Can you talk to us a little bit about, um, so a, an image has gone round of one of your referees, Daniel Sweeney, who uh, suffered very serious facial injuries after a football match. Talk to us a, a little bit about what you know, as much as you can anyway, of the uh, specifics of the incident. What happened? Uh, well, I can't really go into the details of what happened because it's under investigation at the moment, uh, and I wasn't there myself, uh, so it'd be second-hand information. Um, what I can say is that it was it was disgraceful, first of all, and the injuries that Daniel sustained were severe, like severe to his face, like with uh, his jaw broken on both sides, uh, fractured eye socket and fractured cheekbone, and stitches in the nose. He's uh, heading to St James's this morning and then to the Iron Air. Uh, there's really not much more I could say about what happened prior because that's, as I said, it's under investigation with the Garrett Street corner. Okay, so he, just to, he, he is a referee. There was a, a soccer yeah, match being played. Yeah, there were one of our referees from the Midland branch. Yeah. Uh, where was uh, the game being played? It was played in, in the Midlands in, in Horslip. Okay, and Daniel's obviously a referee. He's been a referee for a long time at this stage, I suspect. Uh, he's refereed about uh, eight years, Daniel is. Have you ever seen an, an incident like this in your time? How long no, are you involved? No, no, I've not. Uh, you have, you, I've never, I haven't witnessed uh, assaults, but um, there has been like a bit of aggro, all right. You deal with this, um, you know what I mean? You deal with it as it comes and you send it to the league and the league will deal with the matter then. Uh, but never, this is a first. It's just shocking. Uh, I, I'm actually out of words of, because I was so angry last night. I was over in the hospital with them last night. And I'm uh, so angry over it, like it should never happen. How is Daniel? What, what, like, what was he? What was he saying? What was he thinking? Because you know, you go, you go out um, on a Sunday morning as a volunteer, effectively, to yeah. referee a game to keep soccer going. Because obviously, like, these games can't take place unless there no, are... exactly. There's no ref, no game. Uh, Daniel, for strangely enough, Daniel is in good spirit. He's in good form. Uh, last night, like he's strong minded. He's he's a good lad. Um, if it was me, I'd be so angry. He's the opposite. He'll always think about everybody, everybody else. Always does. He'll, he'll worry about, ah, well, look, their families too, and this, that, and the other. And I say, look, Daniel, no, you were assaulted, and that's the whole of it. And he'd be the opposite. He'd be, no, no, look, we'll take it as it comes. Um, Had the game been particularly contentious? Like, were there, was there an offside? No. no, 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 absolutely nothing got to do with that at all, no. Um, my, look, at the end of the day, as if uh, if a player or a manager has a bad game, does he deserve to be insulted? Does he deserve to be assaulted? No. So referees are the very same. Why he, a referee should never be insulted or never should never should be uh, assaulted? Definitely never should be assaulted. Nobody should be assaulted. So um, it's it's so wrong. So hopefully the justice will come. This is uh, a wider problem, though, isn't it? Uh, there was uh, a statistic during the rounds this morning that seven matches in the last six weeks have been uh, cut short due to unruly antics from the sidelines. Yeah, it is. It is like we have. There's a there's a difference with the soccer, GAA, and the rugby. You can see with the rugby the respect that referees get, and that's what we need to get to. We need to get to that level for safety of referees or referees. You're not. You're, if, you don't, if there's no safety for referees, you're not going to have referees. Referees are just going to start leaving. Paddy Dempsey, yeah. the, the chairman of the DDSL, was speaking last week, and the Irish Examiner, I think we just brought it up on the screen there a few moments ago, sort of uh, scarily accurate on Saturday, uh, saying that our worry now is that somebody will get seriously hurt or even be killed, uh, which is sort of grim when you look at the reality that 24 hours later we're looking at the reality of somebody who is seriously hurt and posting that uh, image on social media. That, again, it kind of comes back to this idea that it's sort of insidious and it's sort of unsurprising to people, I would imagine, who are looking at this on a week-in, week-out basis. Yeah, uh, it is. And look, it was, it was inevitable. It was always going to happen. If not Daniel, somebody else. And like that too, all it takes, oh, one punch can kill a fella. And, and, and people have to realise that. Some people could be remorse straight away afterwards and say, didn't mean that, you know, it was, a natural, it was just an angry moment. But that one punch could kill a person. And that's, that's the reality of it. So they need to start thinking of that. 
that these people have families as well and these people are going out here to do a job to the best that they can do it. So I need to stop. In your view, is an issue here the fact that it is schoolboy or schoolgirl football whereby the idea of pushy parents is a very real thing in these ranks? Because there has been some suggestion that it's just safer for the well-being of referees for them to just manage in the senior amateur ranks rather than even touch schoolboy or schoolgirl football. No, no, that, it starts from the it starts from schoolboys. Of course, it has, has to start from schoolboys. You know, you have to, and that's as you say, you do have competitiveness and you do have pushy parents but that's fine once it's within the limits like you can't be and, I, and I've often witnessed it in underage where uh, someone has swearing and I'd stop them and I said hold for a minute now we're trying to teach kids not to swear on the pitch it's no good ye swearing on the sideline if we're trying to teach kids because they're just going to do what you're doing and, and, and 99% of the time they will they'll stop and say I'm so sorry I apologise uh, and, and that'll be left but it has to start from the bottom. This was a senior game, though, just to, to clarify, wasn't it? It was um, a Division One game. Yeah. So, um, what what can the league actually do here? Obviously, it's a it's a Garda investigation as well. But presumably, yeah. the league can step in and take action based on the referees' report, so that they don't need to go away and um, have due process and all that kind of stuff. The referee no, report. Once will... the league the league gets the report in, and they can deal with their their side of the house straight away and and of course then we have a, an investigation with the Garda Chiacana and they'll deal with that, that side of it but football and side of it the, the league the league will, will deal with that matter OK and so what are potential sanctions open to the league is like the entire club liable to be thrown out if a member of a club is found or suspected to have been involved uh, that I can't answer we, we as referees we're a branch and we we don't that's that's the a league matter which they don't they don't they don't tell us who gets suspended and what to get suspended. We right. just scope their ref game. They they deal with that side of it. They'll deal with the punishments, the sanctions and all that and we just deal with what we have to do in, which is refereeing the game and making sure that we're in top top tip top form on our on our game on a Sunday morning or a Saturday morning. Okay, and as a as a branch of referees, do you feel like if the sanctions aren't serious that you can continue to support the league? Uh, we, look, we're professionals in what we do. We, we're amateur, it's an amateur game, but we're professional in what we do. At the end of the day, the league have, this, they have uh, guidelines that they have, to, they have to abide by too from the FEI. So, but with this case, I, I can't tell you exactly, but like, it, 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 it'll be a long, long time. It'll be a long, long time for, for a couple of them guys for playing football. But, we, we just accept it and we, we get on with it because at the end of the day, we're professional in what we do and we, they have guidelines to deal with matters and they have to be within them guidelines. So, and we just, we, we ignore that side of us. We just make sure that our referees are okay and we do the best. We support, we'll support Daniel, the whole Midland branch and the FAI will support Daniel to the best we, that we can and, and we just leave that side of it to them. And will your referees feel safe? Um, going back to that venue to do games again in the future? Uh, it, yeah, it depends. It depends on what happens in the next few days. And on, on, when, we find, when we get the information on what has happened, it, that, we, 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 but at the end of the day, there, it's, not, it's not the club. It, you know, it's individuals. It's not, it's not the club. Like, of course, the club will get punished because they have to control their players. But... It's not like there's great guys in that club, so uh, so no, uh, I I'd still I'd still I'll referee I'll, if I'm told to referee next week I'll referee next week. All right, Paul, we leave it there. Thanks a million for joining us this morning. Cheers. Thanks very much. It's Paul Malone there, the Irish Soccer Referees Society Midlands Branch Secretary. It's grim, isn't it? Yeah, it's, obviously it's it's extremely grim when you see those pictures uh, coming out. It almost just seems a little bit more insidious than other things. That when you look at the DDSL quotes on Saturday, I know it's different, but it kind of sums up a culture problem in a sport quite often, even if it is at a, at a different level. That's the DDSL chief talking about the sheer number of games that have been called off over the last couple of weeks. It's seriously worrying, but it hasn't really been huge headline news. Maybe it's just not headline news because there's uh, less people posting video footage online. Maybe it's a simple thing like that.
So those games, just to ex explain, those games have been um, cancelled because of... Unruly antics from the sidelines said that Irish Examiner piece. So parents? Yeah. As opposed to the kids getting in fights, or maybe kids getting in fights? Yeah, potentially. I, I, like it's, there's no sort of one size fits all to why these matches have been uh, called off. Um, like, and that's also, the point out that that's only from games with referees, which in their case doesn't begin until under 11 level. Uh, would be grim if it was happening at a, a, a younger age again yeah. than that. But uh, don't rule out that possibility when it comes to pushy parents.